It's been a long time since I've talked about COVID mitigation measures here on this channel, but I wanted to circle back to the issue now because of a huge new Cochrane review that's just been published about the effectiveness of masks and everybody's talking about it. So here's the big news up front. Masks absolutely work. They work to reduce the spread of COVID-19 in real world settings. Absolutely, without a doubt, you should wear a mask when you're indoors in public spaces and, you know, COVID is still a thing. But hold on, you might be saying, my MAGA uncle says the Cochrane Review says that masks don't work. So what's going on here? Well, what's going on is that many years ago, I read a study suggesting that if you want to educate people about popular misinformation, it's important to state the facts very clearly up front before you even get to the misinformation. So yeah, the preponderance of evidence collected over the past three years tells us that N95 masks are really, really good at slowing the spread of COVID-19 during this pandemic. And other masks, not just N95s, they can also help, but not quite as much. Masks help keep sick people from blasting the virus into the air, and they help keep healthy people from breathing in those viral particles. So what about the Cochrane Review? I've talked about Cochrane Reviews a lot in the past few years. They aren't new studies per se, but they're systematic reviews and meta-analyses that look over the dozens or hundreds or thousands of studies on a particular topic, choosing only those studies with the highest quality control, and then weighing them all to deliver a consensus. Like Tylenol doesn't really work for tension headaches, or there's no evidence that brain boosting supplements boost any brains. So it's a shame that when Cochrane took on something that has stupidly become very politicized, they didn't really do what I feel would be their usual gold standard job. The review is titled Physical Interventions to Interrupt or Reduce the Spread of Respiratory Viruses, and it's available in full online. And as always, I linked all my sources in the transcript. You can find a link to that below, or you can go to patreon.com slash Rebecca. Even if you're not a patron, all the transcripts are there for free, available to be read in full. So this review did conclude that wearing masks in the community probably makes little or no difference to the outcome of influenza-like illness slash COVID-19-like illness compared to not wearing masks. Now, immediately you might note that this is about respiratory viruses, not specifically about COVID-19. That's because they actually lumped in a few studies on the effectiveness of masks versus COVID-19, along with a whole bunch of studies on non-epidemic influenza, which is way less contagious, much rarer for you to contract, meaning that of course you're gonna need way more data on that in order to show any result at all, compared to looking at how masks do in the middle of a pandemic. In fact, epidemiologist Gideon Myrovitz katz decided to remove the data for influenza to see what would happen to the result. And sure enough, the random controlled trials for masking during the pandemic showed a clear, modest benefit. Now he thinks that other than that, this review is perfectly fine, but personally, I think it's a pretty big deal that Cochrane released this during a pandemic, knowing that people would assume that the conclusion would be uh, applicable to the pandemic specifically. It's like if I were to release a review concluding that there's no benefit to wearing a seatbelt without mentioning that most of the data I examined was from a survey of people sitting in their parked cars in a grocery store parking lot. Turns out that context is actually very important. Now, unlike that epidemiologist, I've seen others like Dr. Caitlin Yedalina, who I've recommended here in the past, uh, who are critical of much more than just that influenza COVID mashup. Jetalina points out that the review only used randomized controlled trials, RCTs, which is usual for Cochrane and is something that I've seen other scientists criticize about Cochrane before. RCTs in which you randomly assign a part of the population to a treatment group and then another random part of the population to a control group 
They're very, very good at telling us the answers to certain questions, but not to all questions. And in the case of masking during the past three years of the COVID-19 pandemic, we just don't have very many RCTs to examine. So that's one reason why they kind of had to look at different viruses and also different settings. They examined studies from community spread as well as hospital settings where healthcare workers sometimes wore masks and sometimes didn't. Real world data examining what people are actually doing shows unequivocally that masking during this pandemic, especially with N95s, reduces transmission. The more you mask, the lower your chance of getting COVID. If you're in a hospital environment, you have to mask all the time. You're also more protected if the people around you are masking all the time. It's basically herd immunity. The Cochrane author's conclusions are valid if your MAGA uncle would have bothered to read that far. They write, the high risk of bias in the trials, variation in outcome measurement, and relatively low adherence with the interventions, meaning, you know, people just didn't wear masks, during the studies hampers drawing firm conclusions. And there's a need for large, well-designed RCTs addressing the effectiveness of many of these interventions in multiple settings and populations, as well as the impact of adherence on effectiveness, especially in those most at risk of acute respiratory infections. Now, it's absolutely okay if the end result of a systematic review is, hey, we need more data to fully understand the efficacy of this intervention at this time. And I really wish that they had read the room and made that the really obvious takeaway here. Like, I wonder how much of this review was influenced by past criticisms from scientists who say Cochrane takes way too long to make useful recommendations that they can use now. Personally, I'd rather they take their time and get it right rather than cobble together studies that aren't actually relevant to our current situation. We were already facing an uphill battle when it came to convincing people to do the very easy, very basic, obvious good thing of just putting a damn mask on when you're inside public places when case counts are high. If we can't even get the gold standard of systematic reviews to understand this problem, I'm kind of afraid that that battle is lost. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks.